Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Em, and I know this is kind of a weird angle, but I want you to be able to see what's going on down here, even though I don't think you can. Let me... I was getting eaten by puppies trying to do this intro, so I thought, well, I'll move the camera so you can see what's actually happening. And now I've got one trying to eat the... Welcome to filming with puppies, <laughs> right? Say welcome to filming with monsters. Oh, they are just the cutest. Is that not the cutest puppy you've ever seen? I mean, just, I wish I could give you guys, like, just the experience of kissing this puppy because I'm pretty sure it's heaven on earth. <laughs> you agree? Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So the thing that I want to share with you guys today is what I have learned in the several years I've been breeding, but something that I have to remind myself and... I want to remind any breeder out there or anybody who's getting a puppy um, that's already raised a puppy, and that is every single dog is unique. That means they have different needs than the dog you had before. They have a different personality. They have a completely different likes and dislikes. They're a different dog. Even if they're the same breed, even if they're the same gender, even if they're the same color, the same bloodline. I mean, these are full siblings and they each have their own unique needs. So one of the things with raising puppies and having litters of puppies is I've never had two litters of puppies that I did the exact same thing at the exact same time frame with both litters. Um, it's never happened. Every litter has had its own challenges, its own opportunities. Um, so every litter has been different and this litter is no exception. So the challenge I have found with this litter is it's a small litter. It's only five puppies. I'm used to eight, 10, you know, so Clover has a lot of milk. She's a wonderful mother and she has done her job maybe a little too well. These puppies are not thin at all. This puppy is actually probably a week ahead in size. He's two and a half weeks old, and this is a typical like maybe three week old puppy uh, for me, three and a half week old puppy. So very, very large. The problem that I have found with having such large puppies is we hit that milestone of eyes opening. And typically when eyes open, they start walking. But if you can see how chunky these puppies are, those little legs are not strong enough to hold up the caboose that comes with being a chunky puppy, right? I'm sorry. I'm not making fun of you. I think you're gorgeous. Yes, thank you. I love you. So one of the challenges that comes, you know, with them not walking is as they try to walk, they can actually use their legs in the wrong way and then develop some bad habits, I guess you could call it, as to how they use their legs, but also they can develop something called swimmer puppy. And this happens when they spend so much time laying flat on their belly that they don't have a natural, see how this chest kind of naturally comes down and is curved? It's that curved shape, it's hard to show you like that. You can feel it when you pick him up. Your hand's like this, not like this, it's like this. Well, a swimmer puppy, which I have right here, is flat. Look at the difference. Look how flat. So my hand's flat, and it, that's a swimmer puppy. They have the flat chest. The other side effect is usually the back legs will sprawl straight out. This puppy is unique, and her legs are actually sprawling in the back legs. 
but her front legs are sprawling out. So when she tries to walk, it's like she's swimming. So the bad thing about these swimmer puppies is as they develop, they won't ever walk right. Um, you have to do a lot in the beginning to actually correct them. And there are tons of different things you can do to correct them. Now, I've always watched for swimmer puppies. I knew it existed. I've always been careful to watch for swimmer puppies. And I've never had a true swimmer puppy. I've had them where their chest started to flatten out, but usually they'd hit that, you know, eyes opening and within a couple days they'd be normal. But with this litter, they're so heavy, they aren't walking when they should. Sorry, baby girl. And so what happened is we got some swimmer puppies. Now, five, four of the five puppies are doing really good. Um, they are, all four of them have stood on their own. They're building muscle. It's slow, but they're, they're gonna be just fine. This little girl, however, has not developed the way everybody else has. I'm not, I've not seen her stand on her own. So we have been doing a lot of physical therapy and some people will make little vests for the dogs to wear out of uh, PVC pipe or some type of pipe so that they can't lay flat on their chest. I spend a significant amount of time holding this puppy and I hold her, I teach her to sleep on her side, I do swaddling with her and have her sleeping on her side just to teach her because if she's sleeping on her side, her chest will naturally start to go the way it should. And she is starting to improve, definitely, after just a few days of doing this physical therapy. The other thing that we are doing is teaching her how to use her legs. And so this is very time consuming and it's just a matter of physically moving her feet the way that they should go instead of being curved in. I'm not pushing, like that's her natural, how she would use her leg but I want her to use her leg more like this. So this is how we spend a lot of time and then we'll put her and just kind of have her use the muscle. And we do this on both sides. And then with the front legs, we do the same thing. Just slowly have her teaching her how to use these front feet the right way. And then another thing that you will notice different with this litter than my previous litters is that I got rid of the whelping mat that I had and I'm using towels that I've bunched up. So there's a bunch of little footholds in a way. And I've also got what's kind of like, I call it a rumble strip. I've got towels rolled up under the pee pads and that makes it like this so that the puppies can't just lay flat. And Usually with my litters, I have a caterpillar toy that I use um, and they'll lay on that. But for some reason, this litter did not want to do that. Um, and so that is why one of the reasons we have this issue. So just doing that little bit of physical therapy seems to really be helping her. I say a little bit, we're doing this several times a day. I'm probably doing physical therapy of some type with her for a couple hours each day, whether that just be holding her in a position that will help that chest develop right or helping actually move her feet. Um, the other thing that you can do is tape the legs. So you've got this joint right here and this joint right here and you put a little piece of tape right between the two of them on both of the back legs and you connect them about a hip's distance apart and that will help the back legs from sprawling out. But because her little back legs aren't sprawling out, um, I'm not taping her back legs. You can also tape the front, and I have tried that, but she seems to be, she does not enjoy it. Um, she just kind of doesn't move when the tape is on there. So I found that just me doing the physical therapy and holding her is what's working best for her. Um, you can also either make or get these little vests that you put right around their rib cage. Um, you can make them out of PVC pipe or you can order them, they make them online. Um, but the idea is that they can't lay flat. There's always a little bit of a curve and that would be wonderful. I, again, I made one 
she didn't seem to enjoy it very much. Um, I didn't feel like it was really helping because I didn't want to wear it on her all the time. And that's my own personal preference, but a lot of people have said that has, has really helped with their swimmer puppy. So that is what I've learned about a swimmer puppy and that is how I'm treating the puppy that I have. Um, like I said, every puppy is an individual, so you should find what works best for your puppy or your situation if you do end up with a swimmer puppy. Um, but it's a learning experience, and so that's that's what I have learned so far. I am pretty confident that she won't have any issues as she grows up. Um, once we get her over this initial hump of getting her chest back to where it should be and building up some muscle in those legs, I think she'll be perfectly fine. But I wanted to share with you guys what is going on and why you will see different things happening with each of my litters. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you stay tuned and we will catch you in the next one. Have a golden day. can make sure and do things with the puppies when you know they they need it um you made me lose my train of thought you're so cute too okay try again okay let's restart can you back up thank you <laughs>